Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. Um, and this is question number three from Solomon, or actually question number two from Solomon C collection of C3 papers, uh, which I have now called P3. It's part of the P3 collection because um, Edexcel has now changed the IL papers to um, P3s, P1, P2, P3, P4, and so on. And uh, it's also question number three from my end of topic worksheet number three, which is about trigonometric functions, which is um, from my uh, end of topic worksheets. And this question is about counterexample, which actually is a P2 topic. However, it contains material from, uh, from P3, P, P3. So it's a P2 topic, but containing material from P3. And as we know, it is possible for P1 and P2 material to come up in you know, P3 and P4. Okay, if a later paper can contain concepts from previous papers, that's pro there's no problem with that. So it's possible to get a question like this, which is related to the reciprocal function, which is in P3, but using something which is from P2, which is counterexample. So counterexample, proof by counterexample, is when you find one situation or one example which causes um, the statement to be proved to be false. So in this case, if I find one value of theta between 0 and pi, which make this statement false, where, you know, if I find one value of theta where the cosec of that angle minus the sine of the angle is not greater than 0, then I've proved that to be false. So one of the ways to think about this, actually, um, which is probably the easiest way to deal with it, is to think about the sketch of these two curves. Okay, cosec theta between 0 and pi and sine theta between 0 and pi. Now we know that cosec theta is the reciprocal of sine theta. So it's 1 over sine theta. So if I draw sine theta first between 0 and pi, it will look something like this. Okay, so this is pi. Pi over 2 is, reaches its maximum. And this is of course the origin, 0. Now that's y equals sine theta y equals sine theta. Now, y equals sec theta is going to be its reciprocal. So y equals sec theta will go, it will start off from somewhere really high. When, when, when sine theta is zero, it's going to be like an asymptote. It's going to be like, it won't actually reach that line, but it'll be really high. It'll just, be, just after zero, it'll be a really big value. But as sine theta increases, one over sine theta gets, big, um, gets smaller. As sine theta gets bigger, 1 over sine theta gets smaller. So it's going to start getting lower and lower and lower and lower and lower. But when sine theta becomes 1, cosec theta will also be 1 because 1 over 1. And sine theta becomes 1 at pi over 2. So this will, at pi over 2, it will reach 1. And then it will start going up again as it was before until it reaches asymptote. This will be like an asymptote for it at pi. Okay, it will be an asymptote at pi like this. That would be an asymptote. Okay, so it won't actually reach pi, but it will get closer and closer to it, higher and higher and higher and up. So, but the point that we're interested in now is the point here, when theta is equal to pi over 2. And when theta is equal to pi over 2, we can see that they both have the same value. And if you're taking them away from each other, you're going to get zero. So we, we found the counterexample. We found the place where the difference between cosec theta and sine theta is not greater than zero. All these other values, cosec theta is above sine theta. At this point, cosec theta is at the same level as sine theta. So we say when theta equals pi over 2, we have cosec theta, cosec theta minus sine theta is equal to 1 minus equal to let me put it this way cosec theta minus sine theta is equal to cosec of pi over 2 minus the sine of pi over 2 which is equal to 1 minus 1 which is equal to 0 therefore um, cosec theta minus sine theta is greater than 0 is false okay as when theta equals pi over 2 cosec theta minus sine theta is equal to zero. Okay, so something like that, a little statement to, to show that it's, it's false. We proved it false by finding a counterexample. Okay, this is the counterexample. You find one example which proves 
the statement to be not true. Okay, so pi, pi over 2 is that example. Okay, that's part A of the question. Part B of the question, it tells us to find the values in the range, um, the values of theta in the interval of 0 to pi such that cosec theta minus sine theta is equal to 2. Okay, so we want to give the answers correct to two decimal places. So to solve a question like this, what I will do is I'll change cosec theta into 1 over sine theta. So I have 1 over sine theta minus sine theta equals 2. And then I will get rid of the fraction by multiplying both sides by sine theta. So I have 1 minus sine squared theta equals 2 sine theta. And now I've got like a quadratic. So I can bring everything onto one side. And so let me make the sine squared positive. So it will be sine squared theta plus 2 sine theta and minus 1 equals 0. If you want to, you can say let, for example, let um, x be sine theta, if you want to do it like this. Uh, you can then, to make it more familiar with yourselves, but if you want to factorize it directly, there's no problem. So you have x squared plus 2x minus 1 equals 0. So now, you this uh, does not have any, I don't think it has any 1, yeah, it does not have any solutions in terms of um, uh, factorizing. I don't think you can factorize this. You can't because two numbers that multiply to give you minus one. Um, it has to be one and one with different signs. So there's no way you can get a plus two there. So we're going to factorize it. We're going to use, we can use a formula. We can use completing the square uh, to, to, to find the values of x for which this is true. Um, I'll use completing the square just to be remind us of completing the square. So I'm going to first isolate the x squared and x term on their own by adding one to both sides. Then I'll put my bracket, which is squared, with the x in it. And I'll put a plus because there's a plus between them. A half of that coefficient, which is going to be 1. You don't write the x, just the coefficient. Now that's going to give me x squared plus 2x plus 1. I don't want the plus 1. So I've got to take away 1. Okay, and that equals... One. So now x plus 1 squared minus 1, this will give us exactly x squared plus 2x, because you're going to have x squared plus 2x plus 1 minus 1. Now, I want to isolate the x squared, uh, the, the squared bracket, so x plus 1 squared is equal to 2, so x plus 1 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2, so x equals minus 1 plus or minus the square root of 2. So now we can say that we said let x equal sine theta, so I can now say that sine theta is equal to either minus 1 plus root 2 or sine theta is equal to minus 1 minus root 2. Well, I know that this will give me no solutions because this is going to be something which is outside of the range of sine theta. Sine theta doesn't go um, below minus 1 and this is going to be below minus 1. So this is where I'm going to get my solutions. So I'm going to say theta is equal to the inverse sine of minus 1 plus root 2. So let's find out what that gives us. Okay, so you have inverse sine Okay, now, do I want it in degrees or radians? Let me just make sure first. Ah, uh, radians. It says between 0 and pi. So I have to put my calculator in radian mode. Let me just do that first. Shift, menu, angle input. Number 2 is radians. Okay, so now, inverse sine of minus 1 plus the square root of 2. And that gives us our answer. Uh, 0 0.42707 theta equals theta equals 0 0.42 whoops 42707 42707 dot 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 continues on they want the answer to two decimal places now this is just one of the solutions we want to find the solutions between 0 and pi so between 0 and pi there will be another solution okay which shares the same sign ratio which is going to be pi minus the answer, 42707. So this answer that we got here, okay, we're going to do pi minus this answer. So pi, which is 180, minus the answer, gives us 2.71451. 2 2.7, 2 2.7, dot, dot, dot. Okay, so we want the answer here to two decimal places. So theta, therefore, will be... 0 0.43 and 2.71 radians. So there's the answer 
to this question. Um, if you want to make sure that we did the right thing here, okay, it's always a good idea to check in an exam to make sure. So let's see if I've found the correct solutions for this equation, minus one plus or minus root two. Let's see if that, that's what it actually gives us. And you can check with your calculator if you go to, whoops, if you go to um, menu and you go to equation, which is over here, and you press equals, and then you've got a polynomial of order two because it's a quadratic, and the coefficient of x squared is one, so you put one equals, and the coefficient of x is two, so you put two equals, and the constant is minus one, so you put minus one equals, and you press equals again, and it says minus one plus root two, and minus one minus root two. So we know we've got the right solutions there, and there are the answers to this question. So that's question number two from the end of topic worksheet that I was asked about for my student, which corresponds to number three from the Solomon C collection of the P3 or the old C3 papers. Thank you for watching. Any questions about trig functions in P3, um, you'll find um, the playlist for it on the side here showing up on the screen at the end of the video. You'll also see the playlist for Solomon C papers on the Solomon C collection, uh, all the questions I've answered from that. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this icon. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again soon.